Bo Silver. Bo Silver. <laughs> this is uh, Makey Makey. Um, I am going to show you the entire process of setting it up to do something right now. I'm going to plug in the USB. It'll boot up. And then I'm going to attach a yellow alligator clip to the right arrow key. And now I'm going to insert the other side into this uh, pretzel. And hopefully, it'll now advance the slides on the PowerPoint. <laughs> and the back arrow key. <clears throat> Drop it in the beer. Let me go forward again. And now let's go back. So that's the whole process. I didn't set up anything ahead of time. I didn't install special software, and there's no special drivers. Um, that's the whole thing. That's how you invent stuff with Makey Makey. And today, this talk kind of is about Makey Makey, but we're going to get there by explaining a little bit of the journey and what the big picture is. Um, so there's this kind of idea that I've been researching that the world we live in is a construction kit, or, or in other words, the meaning and purpose that's, that's in the world that other people give it, that's not the actual meaning and purpose the world has. But depending on how you look at the world, you can determine what meaning and purpose and design the world has in it. And people do that sometimes in nature, but they don't always do this in modern nature with the electronics and the virtual clouds. So what if you made a little tool and, it was, and, and people, when they walked around with it, they're like, oh, look at that toaster. That's supposed to toast toast, I've heard. But that's not really what it's supposed to do. I can see through that, and I can start to take that apart and give my own meaning to it. So for example, and I think people are very good at this. For example, here's a, a nice hippie book. Um, perfect. I'll give my son the values I want him to have. He'll read this, and he'll start loving things. And here is a little uh, cactus balancing block set. Um, and, and great, we'll learn about architecture and nature at the same time. So I give it to my son. And this is, all babies do this very naturally. Don't use it for what I think they should use it for. He didn't read it. He didn't learn how to love the sun or the moon. He didn't build anything with the cactus blocks. Uh, but he invented a kind of way of catapulting or shooting things with the books and the nature set. And then taught us how to do it and insisted that we do it over and over again. So he created a war machine. Um, and this is very natural. Um, and so I've been studying how we can return to that beginner's mindset of, in the modern world, in the, including virtual stuff, physical things, electronics, everyday stuff, natural stuff, how can we think that we give the purpose, each of us gives the purpose? Because the world I want to live in is a world where Everybody around me is designing their little part of the world, and then I live in that world, and that's a beautiful world to me. So I started by studying the way people do this in nature. People are very natural with, you know, what's this leaf for? Well, it could be for anything. It's not for anything. It came from the tree. Uh, it's, there's not a designated meaning behind this leaf. And, and so I, I looked at Andy Goldworthy's art, and he'll take icicles and make shapes out of them, and he'll sort leaves by hue and create these beautiful sculptures on the spot without bringing any tools with him. He just gets there and sees what they did. So I've been exploring this with beginners. They're called teenagers. And here we are in Vermont at not back to school camp um, out by a river. And I just said, grab some stuff from nature and make a shape out of it or something. So here you can see uh, he's starting to make a little triangle um, under the water out of some sticks, two sides are on there. This is an oak leaf made out of oak leaves um, that this kid started to make. Here's a star pattern. <clears throat> this leaf is tied to a stick with a blade of grass. And here we're kind of framing, working with framing. What does it mean to frame something? And here's the negative space between some leaves. And here's some twigs that are kind of held in tension to two trees. And here's some finished products after about 45 minutes of work. So here you see some hue sorting. Um, here you see some work with birch bark and patterning. Um, and here's the finished product of the negative space between the leaves. Here's a mushroom with some sticks. And, and here, actually, if you ask this guy, hey, how do those sticks hold up? And I know this because one of the kids said, how did you get those sticks to hold up there? 
I don't know how I got them to do it, but here, you just do this, and they hold up there. Um, and so after exploring this in nature for a long time, I started to wonder. I interviewed nature awareness gurus. I, I spent time with some natives, and I started to wonder, how can we do this in the modern world, this kind of, sure, sticks don't already have a purpose. I can repurpose those. How can we repurpose interactive systems and everyday objects? And the first tool I made that I think catalyzes this kind of behavior is the Draudio tool. So here we are thumbtacking into a regular wooden pencil and running electricity through the person and the graphite. And it lets you draw instruments on the page with regular graphite and paper. Here, taking that same circuit and putting it on a paintbrush, now we run the electricity through the water. Water adheres really well to leather couches. It sinks right in. There's the natural porous surface there. Sinks are made of metal. Water, wall flowing, conducts electricity. So this is our idea of how to use something like this. Uh, and, but, but we put it out in the world, and we saw what other people did with it. I'm going to show you a couple examples. This is, this is the diagram of how it works. I have a four-year degree in electrical engineering um, <laughs> with a high GPA. Um, and here's uh, another diagram. This is actually a triple five circuit timer, a timer circuit. And this, this is exact, the exact same circuit that you always set up a triple five timer as in a stable mode. And the only difference between this circuit and a Draudio circuit is you just add this component right here, it's called a human, and, and the world in general. And there's really no difference. I didn't do anything fancy to engineer the circuit. So we went all around the world workshopping this. This is in Taiwan. It's a 12-year-old girl used mushrooms, hot glue, electrical resistors, and electrical tape. The mushrooms were local, so they brought a lot of local materials. Um, this is gummy bears, marshmallows, and a pineapple. This is a teenager who set up a straw with hot glue and re a resistor ladder so that the resistors added up uh, linearly and got a higher and higher pitch as you drank the water up the straw. And here, again, this is at Not Back to School Camp, and I had just run a workshop where we played with Draudio, and this teen, um, she was on work duty, so she couldn't participate, but after was some free play. She said, I really want to do something with Draudio. I really like hula hoops. And so she started to tinker with it, and here's a little video of what she got after about a half hour. She's got copper tape on her shirt. So she's got three notes. It's a hula looper. Um, and these, so I ran these workshops, but also at the same time in the wild, you've got designers who made a synth slicer um, out of a knife. This is, these are professionals. And I think it's Angela Sheehan um, with the puppet. That was a musical puppet that she made. Um, <clears throat> Now, uh, I also workshop this at corporations. So on the top left, you've got Intel. On the top right is a um, grad class at Stanford. The bottom left is Bump. That's a startup in Silicon Valley. And on the bottom right is IDEO, a design firm. So these kinds of people were trying out interactive systems and making them every five minutes and then breaking them and making them again. Just these musical pitches, just triggering these little musical pitches. And so we thought, OK, what if we did some other synesthetic transformations? Let's work with the sound as an input, instead of resistance as an input. So here, sound is the input. Color is the output. And then you can get the sound back out. Here you can clone a piano. It's so really working with everyday objects. How can you re-see their purpose and function? In this case, the sound property. And then we, we, you know, we're working with these synesthetic transformations. In this case, sound to color before electrical resistance to sound. And, and how can we work with this with a complex computer system? How can we work with programming languages and complex output aside from just sounds. So this was our first attempt. This is called color code. Color of the everyday world. 
interfaces with computer systems. So in this case, blue. And now there's other blue things in the world. So you can start to tinker. This, that's the necklace I have on right now, actually. I didn't realize that. So now we've made a fishing pole, just using the color blue. Here the color orange is relevant. There's the screen. And here again with sound as an output, these M&Ms are acting as a musical score. 